Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. My name's Clementine, and as always, I am Super Sam. But never mind that. And in this video, we're gonna take this old, forgotten, and abused Tysco guitar and give it a new life. To achieve this, we're gonna rip her apart and do some gluing and clamping and scrubbing and testing and polishing and finish repair with more sanding and some grinding and some measuring and some marking, then some cutting. Then some routing, a little bit of soldering, some more polishing, reassembly, plug it in, and give it hell. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned. Bean footage, roll it. This is one of those old 60s Japanese made guitars that were sold at Sears and Kmart. I don't know exactly what brand or model it is. And if you do, let me know. Cause it, Tysco made all those K guitars, silver tone guitars, Kent, Kawaii, uh, a lot of other stuff. But this is one of those. If you know the guitars, you know what it is. My dad gave this to me as I believe he got it for uh, doing a setup on another similar Japanese guitar. Uh, old vintage guitar. You can see it's missing some parts. Uh, somebody has stripped the pickup off of it and I'm sure the bridge just fell off somewhere and it's long gone. The nut is also missing and it has a couple of other problems. There's a little bit of delamination on the back of the body uh, but I'm not really concerned with that at all and uh it also the fretboard is separated from the neck it has a crack going down the side and a lot of the finish is missing in some wood the only marking of any kind that i could find on the guitar is steel reinforced neck made in japan on the neck plate and that's common with these guitars from this era so it doesn't really tell me anything so i'm gonna go ahead and uh take the pick guard off and luckily all the electronics besides for the pickup are still intact next i pulled the bridge plate and the tremolo unit out because I need the front of this guitar to be completely flat and you'll see why that is later. Then I took the neck screws out and I found that the neck pocket actually very tight. So now let's take a look at the things I'm going to use to fix this bad boy. For the bridge I figure since it's missing anyway I might as well upgrade it to something that is adjustable and uh, a little more substantial as uh, every note you play is vibrating on the bridge so i got this replacement fender jaguar bridge and it will have to be modified but that should work good for the knobs i have these two witch hats that uh pd two fingers sent me thank you pd and now for the nut i looked up some tysco nuts and man people want stupid money for them and they're just plastic so I measured it, looked around at some specifications, and I found that the bone nut for a Martin acoustic guitar will fit perfect on a Tysco or other Japanese 60s guitar. I went ahead and ordered this little kit that has two, two nuts and two bridge pieces in it. They are real bone. That should help the tone some on the open notes. And now for the part I'm most excited about, uh, the pickup. It's a GFS uh, Surface Mount Alnico 3 Mini Humbucker. Now, if you watch this channel often, you know that I, I build with uh, Neodymium and I show that you can get a Alnico sound from them, but this was just a screaming good deal. I found this thing new in box for 25 bucks and it's pretty and close to the right size. The only downside is the pole pieces stick out of the back and so do the magnets. So I will have to route out the guitar, but I think you'll see in the end, it was well worth it. And I don't ever plan on selling this guitar, I plan on playing it. But I still know there's gonna be somebody eventually to see this video and be like, ah, you routed a 60s guitar, you're going to hell, man. Maybe, maybe, but the tone went to heaven. Also, this is a four wire humbucker, so you can split it, but I wasn't interested in any of that. Uh, with this uh, week of a pickup and this week of magnets, it should sound pretty clear just the way it is. I am not usually a humbucker fan. and If I have one, I, I want it weak and sparkly. Or as they say in the in industry, vintage underwound. First off, let's address this neck. As you can see, it's busted up pretty bad and it was actually real bad. I could take this uh, piece of paper card and put it all the way under the fretboard and move it maybe up to the fourth, fifth fret. In fact, this was so dis 
dis, uh, disillusioning that all I could do at this point is uh, get out my syringe and uh, do some hard drugs. Not really. Uh, this is for uh, put this tight bond through this and that way I can get it up in there without having to completely remove the fretboard because I really don't want to do that. So I took this little styrofoam cup and I put some tight bond in there and some water and I mix it together and try to thin it out where it can go through this syringe. This is a, a, a big syringe. This is a saline IV cleaning unit. It come out a little thin, so I put a little bit of extra tight bond in there. Got it to a good consistency. It sucked it up good and it could still come out. So I stuck a little screwdriver in the end of the fretboard to get it pried up real good and go ahead and let loose where it's gonna let loose. And I took the needle and put it in there and got, got it in the hard to reach places and right in the thin parts. And then uh, after that, I went ahead and took the needle off and just squirted the glue straight in there with the syringe. Really flooded it good and start putting clamps on there. After I got the clamps on there real good, real tight, tightened them several times, got it to squeeze as much as I could. I went and leaned that neck up in the corner and uh, so it will also run down to the, the bottom part of the fretboard too where it was just barely, barely a crack. And we'll address these electrics. Okay, these has gotta go, right? Gotta change them all. No, no, there's nothing wrong with this stuff. This is old, good made Japanese electronics. I feel that people are too quick to switch the pots and, and capacitors out in the guitar. I plug it in and I got nothing. I got nothing from it. But I touched the prong on the plug and I didn't hear anything from the amp so I knew it wasn't getting uh, any kind of connection. So I just scrub it with a scotch bright and I started getting signal at the end of the wire. But, oh, and the pots are not even scratchy. But I turned the uh, volume down and I'm getting some hum. And I do see that this volume is, is done in a strange way. It's probably because it had a gold foil and that's the way that they have to be done. But uh, there's no ground going to the furthest right lug, the number one lug. But that's not the problem. That will just equal more output in the end. It's not getting pulled down. So uh, I realized it wasn't grounding. So I ran the scotch bright through the plug and pulled it back and forth and flossed it. And then it was working perfectly. So now I just rig this pickup on here, see how it's going to work. Did the tap test, turn the volume up and down, turn the tone up and down. Good to go. Now I'm going to show you guys my super secret biodegradable non-toxic guitar cleaning fluid. Look at the way it's just taking that stuff right off of there. I'm telling you man, not just for DIY solution, but for anything, this is stuff is great. Now check this out. Buff job. What's this thing just come alive? It'll be shinier than it was when it was new takes a little elbow grease but it's worth it now look at that you can literally see my hand in the guitar you know what the fluid is water you know what the buffing compound is an old dry sock what about that now there is a trick to it the water makes the surface of the nitro kind of tacky and you take that sock and you rub i'm talking about you really rub it you go fast if it's not burning your fingers you're not getting it and when you do that it kind of like melts and glosses over the top of the the nitro so now it's in the wee hours of the next morning and uh time to take the clamps off the neck it's glued up good and solid but there's a a little gap on the one side i'm not worried about it structural wise but uh, it, it feels uh bad there's like chunks of wood missing and pieces of the finisher busted out and it, it just feels bad doesn't look too great either now i'm going to show you how i repaired that and made it where you cannot feel it at all and really not noticeable by looking at it but first let's talk a little bit about these tuners i think most anybody would change these tuners well as long as your tuners are not physically broken they're really okay a violin just uses wooden pegs and that works most of the time if you're having and tuning issues it's the nut not the tuners and like people change tuners on gibsons a lot and that's that's the string angle it's just a bad design but i'm gonna leave these tuners these these will work fine even though they're beat up and the shafts are bent all i ended up having to do to get them good and tight and, and right was to tighten those little screws on the back you may also notice that the crossbar is missing a nut but it's okay i keep bins of nuts and bolts around ah that brings me to the, the frets too uh you know normally i would do a fret level and polish on here but these little tiny frets on these japanese guitars they're already so short that it would be so easy to knock them down too low so i'm just going to take this scotch bright clean them up a little bit and i'll go ahead and dress these places on the side of the neck that need repair while i'm 
you know, knocking down the fret ends. And now for the repair, super glue. I know it seems crazy, but when I get done, it'll be smooth and blend in with the poly perfectly. I just fill in the crack there with the super glue, leaving it tall, give me something to knock down. And you can see it, it left that little gap that I was talking about. The super glue just ran in there and the gap's still there. So to get it to fill up, I went to the uh, uh, box that's under the bandsaw and I grabbed some sawdust. I put the sawdust on the hole, went ahead and filled that in with super glue again. And uh, it actually took and soaked and stayed this time. And now I know this is not gonna look perfect, but this is the bottom side of the guitar. You're not gonna see this. And uh, when I'm done, it feels just like the rest of the neck. And that'll do it. What we gotta do now is just let this dry. I really did wanna show more of this, but unfortunately I, I didn't think about it and I got my head in the way a bunch but what i'm doing is taking sandpaper starting at like a, a 120 which is actually a little rough for this but i wanted i'm lazy i wanted to knock the super glue down quick and i know i can buff it back out but i knocked the top off the super glue and you can also do this with a razor blade you can scrape it down smooth that works best on a flat surface and but i hit it with that then i got it with like some some uh 220 then it's like four and 600 and then uh 1000 and then some really 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 fine stuff like a, a 2500 or 3000 something like that wet dry and uh i really hit it with that fast to get it hot like what i was talking about with the sock and then after that i did use the the inside terry cloth part of the sock to really heat it up and get it smooth and it actually turned out decent you can see this because there's the color the color is not right but you cannot feel it now on the top side of the guitar that you're going to be looking at i didn't really want it to be an eyesore so i went ahead and hit it with some sandpaper ahead of time and got it a lot smoother first then i went through the same entire process i put the super glue on there let it dry did my progressive sanding and it's not invisible but if you didn't know you wouldn't notice it's definitely shiny and uh it feels like there's nothing that has happened and you look at this and you think well you know that's not perfect but here's what it looked like before and here's it again now yeah i was happy as hell with this so next i use my secret uh hydro oxygen cleaning solution on the guitar neck and i uh, got got around the tuners and all that and then i used the sock to just buff the hell out of it and uh here's here's a better look at how that repair turned out i i can't complain about that it's time now to put the nut on there and uh you know these things come tall they come unsanded and i did sanding and sanding and test fitting and sanding and sanding and uh it it was still a little deep it was a little bit more toward the headstock than what was originally there and i also had to like kind of angle it a little bit because uh the the floor of this uh fret slot was angled uh so what i decided to do is once i got it where i was happy with it and it looked like a good height uh to the slots i uh just started to knock down the truss rod cover you know so it so I wouldn't have to sand the whole nut down that much. And uh, I don't, I mean, this is some kind of plastic, maybe nitrocellulose, uh, whatever, because uh, you could tell that the, the pick guard itself had shrunk a lot and the screws were almost sideways in it. But this stuff has mint in it uh, or eucalyptus. Uh, if any of you guys have ever done tree cutting and you've cut a camphor tree down and it like takes your breath and you feel like you're gonna pass out, that is exactly what this plastic was doing it's like somebody was sitting there smoking menthol cigarettes and blowing them in my face sure that took a couple inches off the life bar there but either way uh when i had it all fitted up i used the super glue to glue the nut down and i know people are like uh, you should use wood glue to do this in case you need it off again no 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 it's good super glue it'll stay it's solid and then uh i put the truss rod cover on there neck is done neck is ready and now for the bridge now uh a jaguar and i think also a mustang they have this uh, strange bridge that goes down into inserts into the body now i could have drilled and used these inserts but i kind of wanted to keep the guitar as original as i could using the parts that i have and getting to the goal of making it play nice uh and i had measured this with calipers and, and checked online and found that the jaguar bridge was the same width as uh, a tysco bridge uh, as far as the the holes so we just need there to be holes where these posts are so i take it outside put it in the 
device, grind those posts right off of there. Then I went ahead and took the flapper disc and sanded it smooth. Then I crossed my fingers and said a little prayer and started drilling because I know that a lot of times when you drill down into a hole that's already a hole, it'll grab the drill bit and snap it off. Then you have to drill that drill bit out of the hole and drill bits are hardened, but it cut like butter. So you can see she fits right down on there, good and tight. Now I have the overall adjustment and the individual adjustment and I can do a uh, intonation. This thing is a big upgrade and I'm happy with it. And th that's a that's one for you guys who deal with Taiskos or other similar Japanese guitars. This is a good thing right here. So now really all that's left is uh, fitting the pickup. I traced out some lines uh, with this uh, heat sink uh, plate here. And then I used uh, calipers to measure the pickup and I used them to mark it out. I got me a good square made and then I uh, cut that out with a razor. Now look Luckily, I already had these factory pickup screw holes, so I was able to take and mark across of them and get me a good center point to work off of, figure out exactly where the pickup route needed to go. So I took the template and uh, marked that out for a, for a location, and then uh, marked the same template on a uh, scrap piece of wood that I could use as a router template. I cut that out on the, on the scroll saw, and then I uh, cleaned it up, got it good and straight with a uh, Japanese saw rasp, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be hidden by a trim ring. Once I was happy with that, I drilled a couple of countersink pockets in the template and I put it down over the body, positioned it, and put some good long wood screws, decking screws, into the table to pin everything down. I used to do the tape and super glue trick, but uh, I just really don't trust it. And on this, I don't want to mess up. So then I started routing, making shallow passes. Not much to say here. <laughs> just check the depth and take it down and give it just a little extra to prevent any clearance issues and uh turned out good and the pickup fit right in the hole at this point i went ahead and soldered the pickup lead wires and i decided before i put the bridge in i might as well polish it go ahead and polish the tremolo unit and the tuners and crossbar and i got two cans of this stuff eagle one never dull i believe this is for cars rims and things man this will shine anything it'll shine aluminum it'll shine steel you'll see it won't take the pits away and I, i'm putting it on here and letting it soak while i work on this other part and then when i come back and buff it with the sock look at that yeah 100 times better i hit the tuners real quick they, they look decent i will admit at this point i was just kind of trying to get it done i wanted to see what it sounded like i'm sure you guys are probably about ready to hear it too but i'll go ahead and tell you you've been hearing it in the background this entire time so i'll go ahead and put the neck back on put the uh bridge and tremolo on then put the uh pick guard on there it's a little tough because it kind of got shrunk and with the the tremolo unit it, the holes were a little wallet out so I, I took it back out and i put some uh toothpicks and holes put it back down and then to place the pickup i i got it right where it goes and i pre-drilled some little holes and screwed her down on there now it's ready for strings and a setup and i'll tell you right now i i didn't really have to do much of a setup on it the the nut that i eyeballed i didn't even have to do the nut slots and i set the bridge in one place i never did mess with the intonation so i'm sure it needs done but it played great Great. I played it for about three hours and uh, this is what it looks like. I mean, I am, I'm very happy with this and with the sound even more so. So I guess uh, without further ado, uh, let me show you that. I will apologize for the mic peaking at times because uh, I had this thing cranked the hell up. It sounds fantastic. At the end, I just tear into it like a bulldog on a stray cat. All right, I'm going into a keyboard amp, a uh, PV keyboard amp. I got a Univibe and a Reverb. I'll mostly just be using a Reverb. Here's clean. Things got the bass response.
sounding guitar I got it this time. Not microphonic. Very strong. Uh, tone all the way down. Fantastic. That sounds good as fuck, don't it? This thing is very, very sensitive to where you pick, how hard you pick. You can. Or. Or you can. Or. <laughs> Same boy, I'm not touching anything. not tubes doing that or anything it's just a keyboard amp oh and I can completely let go of it there's just a little bit of ink coming from that light there but I mean the amp is almost all the way up it's loud as hell in here <laughs>
That just about does it for this video. A cheap old Kmart guitar uh, turned out to be a, a real weapon. I know this wasn't like a super proper restoration or anything like that, but man, I am so happy with this and I will keep this guitar and play it often. If you found this educational or entertaining in any way, please like and maybe subscribe. I am Clementine. You've been watching Heavy Metal ATC. Till next time. Do some hard drugs.